It's another edition of Time About the Movies. We're looking at the movies released on Thanksgiving weekend, 1990. Of course, November 23rd, 1990. And uh, we've got six movies to look at, including two sequels. So let's go ahead and start with the first one here, the bigger of the two, financially. Uh, it's the sequel to 1987's Three Men and a Baby. Now it's Three Men and a Little Lady. Introducing Matt, Peter, and Jack. We're your rabbits. We're your dads. You're the married rat. If you're just a little lady and you need your sleep, don't want to hear no job talking about something to eat. Break down. Touchstone Pictures presents Tom Selleck. We are building an office for 12,000 people. You can't put a bathroom on every other floor. But what if they don't go before they come to work? Steve Gutenberg. What are you doing in there? Uh, we're doing the laundry. I'm hungry. Hi. Hi. And Ted Danson. I loved your last commercial. The uh, laxative one? You were hysterical. You know, a lot of people say that when they watch it, that they really believe that I was constipated. We all live together. Okay. They're a modern family. While we think of ourselves as progressive, this is the most unique family environment. What a crock. Hey, <laughs> where did you hear that expression? What a crock. What? What'd I do? With some old-fashioned ideas. You are married. Oh, oh, um... If Mary and I hadn't moved in here, we'd be in very different places by now. We'd be married. We'd be divorced. You saved us a fortune. You! And a few new problems. Ah, uh, Sylvia, no more milk. I'm getting married. Don't overreact. I can get some milk. Jack, I think she's serious. Who is he? Edward. Yes. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, darling. Where are you gonna live? London. Will you miss me? I miss you. Mary, I love you. Whenever you need us, you just close your eyes real tight, you look for us, and we'll be right there with you. Now, they're going to England. Wow. Look at this place. So huge. Not so splendid as your mighty erections, I imagine. And they'll stop at nothing. How about you? You with us? Yes. To keep the right woman. I love you. Oh, very, very much. From marrying the wrong man. I don't like the guy. Go to your room! He's not the right father for Mary. Then don't tell her that. She's not going to listen to me until I prove the guy's a fraud. But we got to stall the wedding until Peter gets back. <laughs> I'm starting a wave. There are three dads. Hang on. Going over seas, over land. That noise. And undercover. What are you doing in my closet? To keep their family together. I made it. <laughs> I love your mom. Oh, I wish they had a category like this on Jeopardy. I'd clean them. Touchstone Pictures presents Tom Selleck. Kiss me! Right now. Steve Gutenberg. I've been thinking about us a lot lately. There. And Ted Danson. Where's Jack? He's making a move. Hey, Colonel! You're on! Three men and a little lady. <laughs> you look very beautiful. I look like a dork. Did that trailer need to be as long as it was? That was nearly three minutes worth of footage there that they had to show off for this movie. And as you know, with most comedy sequels, most of them don't usually end up being all that good. Not that they're bad. Most, Not that they're all bad. It's just that most of the sequels that come out, for comedies at least, they're, they're just ha only half as good as the original film most of the time. And... Part of the problem is that they always regress the characters back down to where they were in the first movie, and they don't really do anything new and exciting with these char with the characters in the sequel than they do in the first movie. They're just basically repeating the same premise of the first movie over again, and sadly, that's what you kind of get with Three Men and a Little Lady. Although there are a little few, there are a little few things here and there that actually do make it kind of enjoyable. Like I like a little, I like the uh, performance by the little girl in this movie, whose whose name is not in my head right now. Give me one second. Uh, sh I just had the name and I lost it again. Uh, Robin Weissman is the name. I'm thinking of somebody else on here, but uh, Robin Weissman is the l name of the little girl in this movie, and I thought she did all right in here. And I also thought, surprisingly, Fiona Shaw as the as Miss Lomax, who actually falls in love with Tom Selleck's character, she was actually really funny in this movie. A lot funnier than I thought she was gonna th thought this movie had any right to be. She was actually a fun character in the movie, and I kind of wish they did more with her. But, uh, at least for other movies, I mean, but, I mean, yeah, for the most part, the movie isn't bad. It is trying, but it really does fall into the similar kind of trap that the fr that most sequels do. They try to repeat a lot of stuff from the first movie, and it just doesn't work out as well. 
Um, there are times when they try a little too hard to modernize it for the audience of today. The there's a, there's the scene in the trailer where you see Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, and Ted Danson rapping, and it's just like, really, we're doing this, and it's just like, it's it's unfortunate. I mean, it, the first movie was actually a really solid movie overall, but for the most part, the movie, this one here is just, it's just okay. It's not one I'd rather watch over and over again, but. It's it could have been a whole lot better. I kind of wish they did a little bit more to make it to, to make this one a little bit better than the first movie. But I guess I can say that it's not a bad movie. It's just not a good as good of a movie as the first movie was. It's your typical comedy sequel, pretty much. Like it's not going to be as good as the first movie, but you can at least say that it's okay. It's better than what you would expect from most comedy sequels, but it's nothing really special. I'm glad I saw it, but it's not one I'm going to pop in again anytime soon unless I really, really want to watch it again, which is very unlikely to happen. So that's my thoughts on Three Minute Little Lady, and coincidentally, it's about as long as that trailer was. We're coming up on the three-minute mark on that. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, the sequel, the, uh, the far superior sequel, I should say, at least in my opinion, and that was Predator 2. <laughs> Los Angeles, 1997. It's the hottest summer on record. Pollution is choking the city. The gangs control the streets. It has not been a nice day! As bad as things are, they're about to get worse. Much worse. <laughs> It has almost no weight. But it cuts like steel. Incredible. Whoever did this took out four men armed with machine guns by hand. You don't know what you're dealing with. Other world life forms drawn by heat and conflict. He's on safari. Lions. Tigers. Alonzo, Bill Paxton, Predator 2, he's in town with a few days to kill this Thanksgiving. So yeah, I really do like Predator 2. It's no aliens, it doesn't top the first movie by any means necessary, but... I think it's a lot funner than a lot of people give it credit for. It's a good time to watch. If you, it's, it's fun watching the Predator going into Los Angeles in 1997, just causing all this havoc. And for the most part, I like the Predator movies a lot. I like the first movie. I like this one a lot. I like the one that Robert Rodriguez produced, Predators. The only one I really didn't like was uh, the Predator with Shane Black, who directed and wrote that one, which was really a big disappointment. And I guess the Alien vs. Predator movies also have to count in there, too. I am curious to see what they'll do with this new prequel coming up, Prey, in August. But, um, yeah, I really like Predator 2 a lot. I like what they did. I like the idea that they brought this creature into a city and just let him cause all this chaos there. And you've got these great characters here. Danny Glover, Gary Busey, uh, Robert Davi, Bill Paxton, Ruben Blades, Maria Coutinho, and Lonzo. And I also like that they do acknowledge that both the alien and the predator could exist in this world. I like the, what they were setting up at the end where Danny Glover goes inside the thing and finds the alien heads in there. And it does it does really experiment with the idea that both the alien and the predator could exist in this world. And if we had gotten a much better film with that, based off of that logic, it would have been really great. But yeah, it's definitely nowhere near as good as the first movie. It's But it is a ton of fun. I really like it a lot more than I think a lot of people give it credit for. I think the biggest mistake was opening it up on Thanksgiving weekend because really when you open a mo when you open a movie like this on Thanksgiving or Christmas, a holiday where everybody wants to come to the movies, it's usually the family films that do a whole lot better. When you have something like this, yeah, chances are it's not going to do well at all. And this unfortunately was not a big hit in the box office whatsoever, but it has gone to following over time, and I'm glad to see that because, like I said, I really do like this movie a whole lot. I know a lot of people don't really have, still don't have a real love for this, but 
I still really enjoy it a lot. If you haven't seen Predator 2, really go into it knowing that you're going to have... You could, you are going to see at least a better sequel than I think a lot of people will give it credit for. I had a good time with it. I think you will too. So that's my thoughts on Predator 2. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is The Nutcracker Prince. This holiday season, join us as the classic tale of the Nutcracker Prince comes to life. Where did he come from? A magical story of adventure. Fire! Of romance. Oh, dear Nutcracker. Of bravery. Don't worry, Mr. Sclera. of Kiefer Sutherland. Stay. Be my princess. Megan follows. This is like a wonderful dream come true. Phyllis Diller. <laughs> and Peter O'Toole. I think I'm going to like being a prince. The Nutcracker Prince. The season's classic adventure for all the family. Well, if Hollywood has taught us anything over the last couple of decades, it's that it will never be able to make a good Nutcracker movie without it looking absolutely horrible or nightmarish or just plain awful because, yeah, if you've seen how the Nutcracker movies have gone over the last couple of decades, not really a whole lot of them have been any good, and this is another example of it. I mean, it, from the looks of it at first, it looks like it might have some good animation to it, but even in this movie, they managed to screw it up by having, like, a completely different animation structure in the middle of the movie, which makes no sense whatsoever for a story like this. And it's just... It's a mess of a movie. It really is a mess of a film. It's way too loud. The story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The casting of all these celebrity voice talents, Keith Sutherland, Phyllis Diller, Peter O'Toole, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And just... It just doesn't work. It's a movie that really just shows how nobody can really make a good Nutcracker movie without it just falling apart at the scenes almost immediately. Because we had this, we had the Nutcracker in the Four Realms, we had the 2010 movie with the nightmarish rat things that also found a way to bring in Nazism to it, which is just... I mean, how hard is it to make a movie that about this and make it good? I mean, why is that so hard to do? It's just... It makes no sense whatsoever why they can't, why nobody can do it right. But sadly, that's where it is right now, and I really don't think nobody will ever make a good Nutcracker movie. Really, if you, it was really ever because we've seen everybody try to do it, and it fails miserably almost immediately. And this is another one of those examples. The Nutcracker Prince is a movie that Warner Brothers thought they were going to get on the Disney bandwagon, make an animated movie, hopefully make money. And it did any of it, anything but that, unfortunately. So, so yeah, that's the Nutcracker Prince, and um, just like I said, it completely tells you that we can't make a good Nutcracker movie nowadays. Someday we will, but I don't know when that's gonna be. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Robot Jocks. <laughs> It's a new age of combat. Human beings, genetically engineered to be the best fighters in history. Two champions. It isn't over until someone wins. <laughs> At war with each other. Kill it! I have already killed you. Two invincible men. Let's finish it, Alexander. Here now. The ultimate killing machines. I'm gonna get in this thing! And I'm gonna kick your...
I don't know if they actually did it, but it would not surprise me whatsoever if Power Rangers took a lot from this, because you could definitely see a lot of inspiration for the Power Rangers in this, but Robot Jocks, it's one of the, it's one of those typical movies where it doesn't really get a whole lot of press at first. Whatever people that do see the film, it ends up not doing so well critically or financially, but it has this cult following, and I can see why. This looks like a ton of fun, quite honestly. This looks like a good, fun, silly over the top action movie and I like the I like the robot designs I like how over the top everybody is I kind of want to see this movie I'm not gonna lie I haven't like I said I haven't seen it but this trailer really does make me want to see it I do I do see like the inspirations for like Power Rangers and all that kind of stuff and I mean yeah it looks like a ton of fun it's one that I kind of want to check out at some point uh, that's really all I gotta say about it because I haven't really seen it so yeah Power is Robot Jocks, definitely something I might want to check out one day. So, on to the next movie. Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward in Mr. and Mrs. Bridge. Probably presents Paul Newman and Academy Award nominee Joanne Woodward in a film that's been called this year's Driving Miss Daisy. The radio says that the tornado's approaching the country club district at 75 miles an hour. Oh. Mr. and Mrs. Bridge. This is another one of those Merchant Ivory movies. Uh, you basically follow Mr. Bridge, Paul Newman, who plays a lawyer who resists his children's rebellion against the conservative values he holds dear. And Mrs. Bridge, played by Joanne Woodward, labors to maintain a Pollyanna view of the world against her husband's emotional distance and a child's eagerness to adopt a worldview more modern than her own. I literally just read that from the Wikipedia page because this is another one I haven't seen before. I mean... I don't really have seen, I've not really seen a lot of Merchant Ivory movies. I have seen a couple of them, but not a whole lot of them. This is one of those ones that I haven't seen, but, um, you know, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward don't usually pick really bad scripts, and from what I see, from what I see here, it doesn't look too bad, but, like I said, I can't really comment on it too much, largely because it's just, I haven't seen it, but, like, from what I'm seeing here, it doesn't look too bad. It might be something I might check out one day, but I'm not going to completely rush out to go check it out. So, yeah. Quick one on Mr. and Mrs. Bridge. Now let's go ahead and move on to the last movie, which is Hidden Agenda. He's not involved with terrorists. He was too smart to be manipulated. This man Sullivan was no run-of-the-mill person you could just blow away. He was an American lawyer with an international reputation. Am I wrong, or is it illegal to kill people and try to steal a country? An American has been murdered in Northern Ireland. Police said the car failed to stop at a roadblock outside Dungannon. And a high-ranking British inspector has been assigned to the case. We have the men that did the shooting. Our job's done. Are you willing to settle for that? The truth has been buried. I want that tape. What tape? The tape they found on Sullivan's body. There was no tape, sir. The investigation has been obstructed. Consequently, I was put under close surveillance. Mail was opened. Phones were tapped. But the real crime is the cover-up. Get down! Get down! There was no roadblock. No witnesses were questioned. The weapon found in the car had no fingerprints. Forensics showed that the shot that killed Sullivan was fired at a distance of two meters. I saw it happen! It was them! They want this thing buried, and if necessary, they will bury you alongside it. It's an intelligence matter outside your jurisdiction. I don't ask your cooperation. I command it! Get out of Belfast. You're in danger here. This is Paradox. Subjects leaving location. Pressure came from the CIA to get rid of the Labour government. I don't want to control. We're on the Dublin Road. You're saying that Thatcher was involved in this? It couldn't happen. It did. Hemdale Film Corporation presents Francis McDormand, Brian Cox, Brad Dourif. <laughs> Agenda. Again, one that I haven't seen before, but I have to admit, this actually does look pretty promising. Especially from the people they have in here. Francis McDormand, Brian Cox, Brad Dourif. It looks like a good political thriller. I'm actually kind of surprised that it hasn't been remade yet, because this looks like a movie that probably would have been remade for an American audience down the line, but it hasn't really done so yet. But who knows, maybe, maybe in a couple of years from now it actually will be, but... I mean, it looks promising enough. It actually looks pretty honest about about the political about the things that they're trying to talk about here. It looks like a smart political thriller, so maybe one day I'll definitely check it out. So um, that's all I gotta say on it right now because I haven't really seen it. But 
trailer does show a lot of promise to it. Uh, hidden agenda. And on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next time around, we'll wrap up the month of November with two movies. One notable one, Kathy Bates and James Caan and Rob Reiner's Misery. And another one that I'm not too familiar with, Diamond's Edge. So, we'll wrap the week off, wrapping up November. And, um, so yeah, two movies to look at next time around. So, thank you guys for watching. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another new episode. So thank you for watching. See you guys tomorrow. And until then, take care.